Every software system needs a project metadata file to manage its version, dependencies, and so on. And Node software is no different. Let's talk about package.json. Package.json is a manifest for your Node application. It contains all sorts of metadata about your application, including its name, version, dependencies, scripts to run, and so on. In this video, we'll look at package.json. We'll look at the required elements of a package.json file, and we'll look at semantic versioning and its role in dependency management. All of the code examples you'll see in this video are available in GitHub, and a link to the repo is in the video description. Let's get started. Package.json can contain lots of elements, but it's only required to have two, name and version. The npm CLI can auto-generate a package.json file for you. From a terminal window, type npm init. By default, it leads you through an interview. You can also specify a dash y flag to accept the defaults. The contents of the package.json that was generated are displayed on the screen. There's the name, which npm derives from the current directory. The version is always 1.0.0. Description is empty. By default, the main program is index.js. The scripts element has a test tag that if you run it, echoes an error message. There's an empty array of keywords, an empty author tag, and ISC as the license. I'm going to fancy this up a little bit in preparation for what we're going to talk about next. That's better. Let's say in the unit8.js file you decide to import the Makoto logger and use it. Go to a terminal window and run this command, npm install makoto-logger. Now look at package.json and let's walk through what just happened. Three things. First, it created a file called package-lock.json. Then in package.json, npm wrote a new object called dependencies with a property called makoto-logger whose value is this weird looking string that kind of looks like a version number, but with a caret on the front of it. What's that about? Before I answer, let's add another dependency to package.json, one that itself has a lot of dependencies. From a terminal window, I'll install SQLite 3, npm space i space SQLite 3. You probably know that you specify your node application dependencies in package.json, but what is this strange looking syntax? That's semantic versioning, or Simver syntax. Simver is super important to managing the incredible dependency fanout that Node applications have, so it's important that you have a basic understanding of how it works. Let's look first at the problem that Simver helps to solve. For SQLite 3 alone, NPM installs 60 plus packages from the registry. The good thing about software is that it evolves. The bad thing about software is that it evolves. The problem is the incredible dependency fanout. L let me show you what I mean. Go to npm.anvaka.com. Let's look at the dependency fanout for SQLite 3, the package you just installed. One package depends on another, and another, and another, and so on. Now, think about how many packages there are. And many, if not all, are evolving and changing all the time. If you had to manually walk through every dependency in your application every time you upgraded something, this is a tough problem. And it's the one that Simver was designed to help solve. A JavaScript application of any size at all has hundreds or thousands of dependencies. With semantic versioning, walking the dependency tree and automatically resolving dependencies makes the problem a lot more manageable. But Simver isn't perfect. And the better you understand how Simver works, the better able you'll be to use it correctly. There are three parts to a Simver version number. The major number, the minor number, and the patch number. There's an implicit contract assigned to each number with respect to a software change. A change to the patch number is for a bug fix. You can safely install it without worrying about it breaking your code. A change to a minor version number means a new feature, but one that should remain backward compatible. A major version change means it will certainly break something in your code that depends on the previous version. So what's up with that Simver syntax we saw earlier? Simver syntax is what makes it work. For each dependency, you specify how much change you can tolerate for that dependency. And Simver automatically picks the best available version that matches the rule you specify. The caret says any patch or minor version change within the current major version number is fine. 
An illustration is probably easier to see. At simver.npmjs.com, you can actually play around with Simver syntax of live components from the NPM registry. Let's choose SQLite 3 as the component. As you enter a Simver string, the versions of that component that match that string are highlighted. The latest major version of SQLite 3 is 4, but let's play around with 2 for this illustration because, well, there are more numbers to play around with. If I enter caret 2.0.0, that says any minor and patch of major release 2 is acceptable. But let's say that I only want minor release 2.1 and up, so I'll specify caret 2.1 and Simver will match any release from 2.1.0 all the way to 2.2.7, but not above that. A tilde with, say, 2.1.9 says any patch starting with 9 up to the minor version number 2 is fine. And Simver will match any release from 2.1.9 through 2.1.19, but not above that. You can also specify an exact match like 2.2.6. At the bottom of the Simver calculator tool, there's a guide for using it. And you can find more information on Simver on the NPM blog and in the NPM docs. And be sure to play around with the Simver calculator. It's a super easy way to get a really good feel for how Simver works. Links to all those resources are in the video description, so be sure to check those out. And there you have it, a tour of package.json. All of the code examples in this video are in GitHub, and a link to the repo is in the video description. And be sure to check out the full Node.js course available from IBM Code. A link to the course is in the video description. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Steve Perry. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. So long.